happy Sunday, all of my crafty friends. Today, I wanted to come in and do something pretty quick using the He's Alive stamp set by May May Made It. Um, I have always subscribed to her um, stamp sets, and I especially love her scripture sets. Um, and I thought that this would be a really nice one to do one of the memory decks um punch style cards with. So I've used my Cricut to create the actual sizing of the card and I'll use the Heidi Swap Memory Dex Punch in order to punch it. I also brought out some masking paper, some vintage photo, and some Gina K Amalgam ink. I will also bring out some of her mini ink cubes in the Fresh Asparagus on the right and the Winter Pines I think is the color on the left. So those are most of the things that I'm going to use today. I will be bringing out a couple of other things, but we will talk about those as we get along the way. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out my Misty stamping tool and I am going to stamp out the image of Jesus. And I am going to also mask that image off because I'm going to kind of create my own background pattern paper type of look. So we're going to take that, I'm going to get it placed where I want, and I'm going to bring in the Gina K Amalgam ink, and I'm going to stamp that a couple of times. It's a brand new stamp set, and I didn't condition it with my hands or anything before I started. So I um, stamped it out, I think, about three times. I've been thinking about doing this um, for a little while, and I don't know how frequently I'll do it. I would love to do it each Sunday. However, I know that that may be a bit of a commitment, and we will see how this goes. You guys let me know. But I always loved when May May did the um, art journaling series. It was so great. It um, was inspiring. It uh, made me feel creative in addition to my uh, religious research and things of that sort. And it always gave me something to look forward to in putting two things that I love together. Um, my love for Jesus and my love for crafting. So I would look so forward to each of these um videos that she would produce however uh after a while she didn't do those anymore so i uh, thought about it and thought about it and i decided especially when this one came out because i really love this set that i wanted to try to do it so you guys let me know if this is something that you think you may be interested in seeing um, on a more frequent basis. And again, like I said, I don't want to hold myself to a promise of doing this every week because my life is just sometimes in a, a tailspin. But, you know, it's something that we could definitely try. Um, maybe it's something that I can do live and then I don't have to worry about editing. That's a little bit easier. So you can see here I am fussy cutting and this is not absolute real time but it is pretty close to real time I think I just have this sped up like twice um, and I'm doing my fussy cutting this image does not have a specific outline so I'm just getting really close to the edges um, so that it doesn't have too much of a halo however because I'm going to be doing some ink blending you'll see at the end where I have a few halo areas that I don't absolutely love and I'm able to use my paintbrush to kind of blend that out because we are stamping on some watercolor paper and I believe that I'm using the Canson XL watercolor paper and I'll have it linked below. So we'll be able to do that. So that was a pretty easy image to um, trim out here. Around the hands were a little fuzzy. I don't know that I love that part, but it's okay. Now watch what I'm doing. I'm about to peel this off, right? Guess what I did? I have completely stamped this on the wrong side of the masking paper. See that? Wrong side of the masking paper. Yep. Never fear though. We're going to bring in some pixie spray and I'm going to spray <laughs> the opposite side and make it tacky. And then we're going to use it as a, um, as a mask and it worked perfectly it did leave a couple of sticky spots I don't think I waited long enough to let it um, dry enough but it was easy to kind of just rub off with my finger 
So now I'm just bringing in um, one of my, I think this is one of the Amazon um, makeup brushes. I will tell you that I have received a couple of um, the actual blending brushes from Simon Says Stamp in some of the kits. And then I had the makeup brushes that look exactly alike and I truly cannot tell the difference. They are all mixed together and I could not pick out one from the other. So. Um, I didn't do an actual comparison because I never purchased any of the blending brushes, but that's my comparison. Like, I can't tell in my craft room which are which. They all work very well. So, just my two cents. Um, it's not it's not a fact. So, you see, I've done some ink blending. I just wanted to give it kind of a vintage -y look. Um, and now I'm going to bring out those palm leaves that are there. And initially, I was going to stamp them together, and then I decided, no, I want to go back to my original idea, which was to um, use the fresh asparagus and that winter pine. It's called winter pine. That's the color. And the winter pine to stamp in two different colors to kind of create that background. Again, I've not used the stamp set, so I stamped it off on a scrap piece of paper the first time just to make sure that it would um, stamp out very well. And these Gina K inks work amazing. And I don't use them as much as I thought I would, but I every time I do use them, I really love them. So I did, I do have pretty much, I think the full set of the original Gina K um, dye ink in the cubes um for mother's day i'm hoping that i will get the full set of the all to new inks in the full size ink pads that's what i want for mother's day because i absolutely love their inks and i love the fact that they all come in color shade palettes so um and i have full set syndrome so i need all of them so that's why i'm going to request it for a mother's day gift so as you can see, I'm just going around filling in all the areas and putting um, those palm leaves all over, making sure that I'm stamping it going in different directions, stamping some of them on and off the page just to kind of make it flow very well. Now here you go. I have taken off my mask and I'm just taking what's left on my blending brush to blend a little bit around the hand area. I didn't really love the way that right side turned out, but it will be okay in the end. I'm taking one of those very small blending brushes to try to get into the little crevices of it. So now that I have completed that part, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my mini Misty and I am going to stamp out this um, sentiment that says the grave could not hold him. I love that sentiment. I absolutely love it. I'm also going to bring in the Simon Says Stamp grid transparency to help me try to line this up correctly because that's not my forte. I don't line up very well, but that's okay. They make things like that for me. So I'm going to get that lined up the way that I want it to be. And once I have that lined up um, where I want it, I'm going to bring out my Versamark Dazzle um, ink pad. And this is the first um, watermark ink pad I ever purchased. So I had no idea that it was a difference, but I love this because it has a little dazzly um, shimmer to it if you just use it as a watermark um, ink pad. So I'm using my anti-static powder tool in hopes that all of my inks, my distress oxides are dry and that it doesn't stick everywhere. And we do a pretty good job. So once I get that stamped down, oh, the Versamark Dazzle, I think they discontinued the frost color. And so I am going to have to change after this. So another story for another day. I'm going to bring in my ultra fine embossing powder in the color Gilded by Brutus Monroe. I really, really love um, his embossing powders. I think I may have to try to subscribe to his like embossing powder of the month thing because everything that I've received from him in regards to embossing powders have been phenomenal. Um, they are very fine, very great detail. And this did not stick everywhere. Um, as I was hoping that it wouldn't. So I'm letting my heat gun um, heat up off to the side. It's so funny because my heat tool went out right after they came out with the updated one. I wasn't gonna get the updated one, but then my heat tool went out. So I ended up getting the dual Wagner heat tool, which is great. The other one was amazing as well. So now we have our sentiment all 
um, heat embossed and it looks great. So the next thing that we're going to do is I um, am going to go ahead and use the punch and they have the, the grids for you to line it up with. And I'm going to line up the punch and punch out my memory decks um, grooves. That's what we're going to call them. We're going to call them grooves. So once I've got that done, the next thing that I've chosen to do, I was toying with initially leaving the image in white and have it stand out that way. Um, I didn't. I don't know whether I would have preferred it if I had, but I have chosen to bring out my um, Karen Brush Pro metallic markers. I haven't had an opportunity to use them yet, so I thought that this might be a great time. This comes in a set of 10, and we're going to use three of the colors out of this set. I'm going to use the metallic black and the metallic silver for his clothing, and then um, for the skin tone of the image, I am going to bring out this um, color of metallic copper. So, um, and I did have to water that down a good bit so that it would uh, not be as strong. I'm also going to be using my number two round brush by the Silver Brush Company, and I have a little bit of water off to the side in my cups. So what I'm doing here is I'm just putting in lines of color um, where the illustration has already told me that there are shadows. And I'm just going to pull out that color with my uh, paintbrush and some water. Now I will tell you, these are very pigmented. If I was to do it again, I would not have used as much color. Um, I did want it to look kind of dark dingy look but it came out more in a gray color and in the end it looked fine however it wasn't what I initially had in my mind just simply because this is super pigmented and I wasn't very light when I went in with the color now it flows very well it um, paints amazing I will say that when I was using the copper color, um, and I didn't find this so much with the black and silver, however, when I was using the copper color, it seemed to be a little more difficult to uh, pull the color out once the pigment dried. So but just be careful with that. You may want to kind of test them out, um, which I didn't do. Like this is the first time that I've broke them out. We are doing this together on camera for the first time because I figured we we're on a journey together. Like there's nothing to hide, right? So at any rate, I am going in and I'm doing his actual um, clothing in the metallic silver color. Now, when I was doing this, I was not absolutely loving it. However, I've heard multiple times with the water coloring, trust the process, let it dry, you know, you'll be happier with it when you see the end result. And that was absolutely true. When I'm looking at the photograph and after it has dried, I love it so much more. So I um, have now switched over to this copper color and initially I was just putting the color straight down. Then I decided I'm going to wet it and then I'm going to bring the pigment to it. Um, with my brush. I seem to like that better. And then I liked it even more once I diluted it down a little bit when I'm coming up here to his neck and his face area. This is where I was like, okay, I've got it. This is what I want to do to get that lighter color. So if you want a bolder color, go straight to the paper. If you're looking for a lighter color, like I didn't want his face to look like extremely copper. I just wanted it to, to look shadowed and then to definitely see a highlight. And that worked out better. Now you can see that I've gone in and I've diluted all the remainder of the pigment. And this is where I'm kind of going around and allowing it to meld with what was left of that vintage photo in order to shade in that halo look that I was getting. So here we go. This is kind of what we have. Very metallic-y. I'm really loving these metallic pins. But of course I couldn't stop there because I love all things shiny. So now we're going to bring in something else that's new to my craft room, the Bria Reese Liquid Glitter. 
is phenomenal. So I love all the shimmers. I am just going to put one drop down. I am going to add a little bit of water to that with my paintbrush and then I am going to flick some paint, not paint, glitter. I'm going to flick some glitter all the way around all over the image and once we get that done and once it's dried that's it this is my memory decks punch for today um and i will then on the back write my scripture for this week and i will be able to place it in my rolodex so thank you guys so much for coming along with me i hope you guys enjoyed let me know if you would like to see more of this and i will catch you guys soon in our next video have a great day bye